Anytime you're factoring, the very first thing you should be checking for is the greatest common factor. Always, always. Your greatest common factor can be a number or it can be a variable, but you always want to check for that first. Okay. So here, if I look at this one and we're wanting to factor, uh, if I look at my numbers, notice they're all even, which means that at least we have a common factor of 2. Now, I look at my lowest number, and then my lowest number, I look at factors of that to see if there's other factors and the other numbers that match. So here, for 4, we've got 1, 2, and 4. Well, we already know 2 goes into it because they're all even. So then I want to check and see, well, does 4 go into them? Well, 4 is the same number as 4, so we know that works. So I'm going to see if 168 is divisible by 4. So if I do 168 divided by 4, that gives us 42. Right? So it is divisible by 4, so I'm going to take everything and divide by the 4. So we do 4x squared divided by 4 gives us x squared. Negative 4x divided by 4 gives us negative x. And then negative 168 divided by negative 4 gives us negative 42. So then I look at what's left. When we're looking at what's left, we want to say, since this is a trinomial, meaning three terms, and it looks like our ax squared plus bx plus c, I want to see, is there a way for me to multiply to a times c, but to add to b, right? So when I do a times c, the a is the unsaid 1 here. So 1 times negative 42 is negative 42, and then we're adding to negative 1. So then I check my numbers. I can see that 6 and 7 are the way that get us to multiply to 42 but add to negative 1. I like to find my numbers first and then the signs. So if I want negative 1, I need the 7 to be negative and the 6 to be positive. Since we're multiplying to negative, I know one of my signs is going to be positive and one is going to be negative. Since I'm adding to a negative, I have to have the bigger number be negative. Okay. So then there's a couple ways that you can go from there. So if you do your box, right? So I'm going to put my 4 here, and then I'm just using this part in the box. So x squared minus 42, and then you can have 6x and negative 7x. So if I take out my common factor in each one, so in my first row between x squared and 6x, there's a common factor of x. If I take out the common factor, that will give me what goes on top of the column. So x squared divided by x is x. 6x divided by x is 6, and then my second row, I have a common factor of 7, but since our first number is negative, I'm going to take out the negative with it. So then we can double check negative 7x divided by negative 7 is positive x, negative 42 divided by negative 7 is positive 6. So then we get x minus 7 times x plus 6, but still times by the 4 from out front. Okay. So if we try another example, if I give you 12a squared minus 52a plus 48. Again, all of these are even, so I know at least 2 goes into them. My smallest number is 12, so I know 12 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Right? So I'm going to look for numbers of the factors of 12 that also go into these ones. So we know 2 works. Um, Remember, your trick for threes is that if you add the two digits and they are the sum is divisible by three, then the whole thing's divisible by three. So five plus two is seven, which means this one's not divisible by three. If I do four plus eight, that's 12. 12 is divisible by three. So the 48's divisible by three, the 12's divisible by three, but the 52 is not. Okay. So then um, if I check the four would be our next one. So this is divisible by 4, this is also divisible by 4, this is also divisible by 4. So I'm going to take out the 4 and then I'm going to check to see if I have anything else that's a remaining common factor. So 12a squared divided by 4 is 3a squared. Negative 52 divided by 4 gives us negative 13a. And then 48 divided by 4 gives us 12. So then I'm going to look between 3, 13, and 12. 13 is prime, so that means I have no other common factor other than 1, which isn't going to change it. So I got my greatest common factor of 4. So now we can go about one of our other ways of doing it, so or of factoring. So since this is ax squared plus bx plus c, right, I'm going to see, well, can I multiply to 3 times 12, but add to the negative 13. So 3 times 12 gives us 36. 
and we're saying can be multiplied to negative 13. No, add to negative 13, multiply them to 36. Sorry. So I know 9 and 4 multiply to 36. I need both to be negative to add to a negative 36, but multiply to a positive 36. I think I said that wrong here. Negative 9 times negative 4 is positive 36. Negative 9 plus negative 4 is negative 13. That's what I wanted to say. Sorry. So then um, we could do grouping if we wanted to from here. So if we do grouping, we do 3a squared, we keep the plus 12, and then we use these two numbers right here as the negative 9a minus 4a. So I'm going to group my first two numbers and group my last two numbers. So since we have a common factor, we've got this extra set of parentheses that we're going to be working with. In my first set of parentheses, I have a 3a in common. If I do 3a squared divided by 3a, that's a, negative 9a divided by 3a is negative 3. In my second set of parentheses, I've got a negative in the front term, which means I'm going to pull out a negative. Between 4a and 12, there's a common factor of 4. So I'm going to take out a negative 4. Negative 4a divided by negative 4 is a. 12 divided by negative 4 is a negative 3. Now remember when you're grouping that you want to find um, your parentheses should be the same here. This part. Those should match. If not, two things happen. One of two things happen. You screwed up or it's not factorable. So I always assume that I screwed up and then double check my work and then if not, then I know it's not factorable. So we put the a minus 3 here and then we put the leftover part in its own parentheses. And then notice the greatest common factor just followed us all the way along here and that gave us our answer. So if we look at another one, so if I give you 15v cubed minus 5v squared minus 70v, okay. well, first of all, when I look at my numbers, my lowest is 5, so I'm going to check these two are also divisible by 5, the 15 and 70, so I have a common factor of 5. But I also have a common factor with my variables, so I'm going to take out a 5 and a v. Okay. When I do 15v cubed divided by 5v, that's 3v squared. When I do negative 5v squared divided by 5v squared, that's negative v. When I do negative 70v divided by 5v, that gives us 14, negative 14. Okay. Now, if we wanted to do, last time we had done grouping, before that we had done the box. So if we want to try guess and check on this one. Okay. So if we try guess and check on this one, then I know that these first two terms need to multiply to 3v squared. So I'm going to do 3v and v. And then these last two terms need to multiply to 14. So I could have 1 and 14, 14 and 1, 2 and 7, 7 and 2. Okay. So then I'm going to check my outsides and insides. So my outsides and my insides and see which one will get me to a 1. So if we check our first one, this is 14 and 3, which doesn't get us where we need to be. 1, and then 3 times 14, which is too high. We have 2 and 21, got 7 and 6. Well, the 7, the 7 and the 6 is the one that I want. Now, normally I would just erase. I'm going to just rewrite it below so you can still see what my work was. So the 7 goes there, the 2 goes there. So 7v is this one. And then 6v is this one. We're trying to get to a negative 1. If I want negative 1, that means the 7 needs to be negative and the 6 needs to be positive. So to get the 7 to be negative, I need a negative here. To get the 6 to be positive, I need a positive there. So then this becomes my final answer. Okay. So those are some of the ways that you can factor with the greatest common factor.